Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. The sedition's top story. Government to make online learning possible for 4,000 students. The Ministry of Health to tackle childhood obesity as it seeks to build healthy communities. And Taiwan assists St. Lucia in displaying its heritage to the world in a new marketing tool. The new academic school year officially commenced on Monday, 13 September 2021, with students receiving instruction via the distributed learning approach. Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, Honorable Sean Edward, explained that the initial plan was to have students return to face-to-face in-classroom learning. However, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and increased cases in St. Lucia has made this impossible as such classes will be conducted virtually for students with smart devices and internet connectivity. Unfortunately, there are hundreds of students in our school system who do not possess a tablet or laptop computer or internet connectivity. This situation of students not having devices to take advantage of the virtual learning platform concerns me tremendously as minister and I have caused it to be the subject of very robust discussions amongst education administrators and my cabinet colleagues. Thankfully, upon apprising him of the situation, the Honorable Prime Minister without delay instructed that through the requisite channels and employing the most transparent government-approved procurement guidelines, the Ministry of Education makes available at the soonest almost 4,000 laptop computers to students in need. The minister explained that upon arrival on island, the devices will be distributed amongst incoming Form 1 and Form 2 students in the secondary school system. He disclosed that there are other initiatives afoot to secure devices for primary school students, particularly those in grade 6. Honorable Edward assuring that no student will be left behind also expressed concern for students' well-being. COVID-19 has taken a toll on us as a society and our children have not been spared or exempted. We will ensure that the necessary support mechanisms are in place to help students recover socially, emotionally, and academically. Principals, teachers, I urge you to take the time. Listen to your students as they express how they feel, how their lives have changed, and how they handle their situations and challenges. Let us be flexible and supportive more than ever before as we embrace new approaches to meet the needs of our students while providing them with the best educational experience in the circumstances. The Ministry of Education expressed gratitude to all stakeholders for their cooperation and will continue to regularly monitor the health situation review processes towards improving academic recovery and minimizing instruction loss. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs is shining a spotlight on the problem of childhood obesity as St. Lucia observes Caribbean Wellness Day. This year's commemoration focuses on equitable access to health and all of society approach to health and well-being and building healthy communities under the theme Power Through Collective Action in it together, building healthy communities. St. Lucia's Ministry of Health recently hosted a virtual health fair, highlighting various areas of concern. More from Homer DeMarc. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs recently celebrated Caribbean Wellness Day 2021 with a virtual health fair. The event consisted of informative presentations by health professionals highlighting prevalent health ailments in the Caribbean region. One topic of particular importance discussed was that of childhood obesity. A presentation by Dr. Lisa Hunt, Chief Nutritionist in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, highlighted that this impediment to children's health has tripled from 1975 to 2021. Dr. Hunt explained that there are a number of contributing factors to childhood obesity, including poor eating habits. We have another issue of lack of physical activity where children are spent sitting down a lot, especially through the COVID situation that we have. Last year, there were, um, after the COVID shutdown, there were many children that were overweight where their uniforms could not even fit them. And so we don't want that to continue because 
We know the implications of childhood obesity. We want the children to be more active. So um, sitting and, and playing with the video games and these things are contributing factors to childhood obesity. Spending too much time watching television on the phone, um, screen time is another modifiable factor. Another issue is food marketing to children. This is very powerful. The advertisement of unhealthy foods to children can change, the, can influence children's um, choices of food, children's preferences of food, and, and have their mothers, encourage their mothers to buy foods that are not healthy. Dr. Hunt stated that the substitution of breastfeeding with infant formula and genetics can also contribute to obesity in children. Minister for Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs Honorable Moses Jabat has indicated that the Ministry of Health is aiding in tackling the issues of childhood obesity and non-communicable diseases in St. Lucia. Through our nutrition unit, we continue to implement policies that are aimed at increasing physical activity and healthy diets in schools. We are involved in research and surveillance of risk factors for major NCDs. As governments, we cannot say in the Caribbean that we have achieved what we set out to do in September of 2007, but every year we attempt to do more. This year's overall theme highlights the fact that being and staying healthy starts with each and every one of us. We can only do it together. We must ensure that every single one of us makes it our duty to find out what we can do. We can make every effort to be more physically active. The Caribbean Wellness Day Health Fair was held on Saturday, 11 September 2021. From the Government Information Service, I'm Humedi Mark, reporting. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Rural Development and Food Security, Honorable Alfred Prosper, continues his familiarization tour with a visit to agricultural divisions in the south of the island. Minister with Responsibility for Agriculture, Honorable Alfred Prosper, on the continuation of his tour, got a first-hand look and update on the ongoing developments at the Volet Agricultural Livestock Center. The livestock station, currently in Phase 1, will see the development of approximately 30 acres of land, where its operations will focus on growing the livestock industry in tangible ways once completed. Services to be offered will include animal health advisory and treatment services to facilitate improved livestock production. Minister Prosper expressed his satisfaction with the station's progress and noted that the station will provide many opportunities, particularly to young farmers, by producing breeding stock and allowing them to multiply for the purpose of selling to farmers. I see tremendous opportunity for our young people to get into livestock production. I see tremendous opportunity for our young people and our current livestock farmers to benefit tremendously in terms of, in terms of making money from livestock. And I am really, really happy to see the beginning of this uh, station in terms of providing the services to our farmers because I think at this time our farmers desperately need that type of service. And I was very happy to know that the ministry is focusing on more in-depth research being done in Volet in terms of livestock production. The second leg of the tour continued with a visit to Regions 3 and 4, where the minister met with the staff of the regions to discuss the programs in place for farmers. This was followed by a visit to the Pradia Lassani unit, where the minister was apprised of the various challenges being faced by the unit. I know this unit from what I gathered, has tremendous challenges. And one of them that concerns me very much is the fact that insurance coverage has not been dealt with in a manner that will protect those officers given the risk involved in the performance of their duties. This is something I think the ministry needs to tackle head on. And I'm hoping that um, in addition to problems with lack of vehicles and uniforms and office space, those problems will be addressed in, in, in the short to medium term to ensure that these people feel comfortable performing their duties at the level and standard that are, that are expected. As Minister Prosper continues along his familiarization tour, he reaffirmed his commitment to improving the agriculture industry of St. Lucia. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anisia Antoine reporting.
St. Lucia has taken a major leap into the future, showcasing the latest avenue for the marketing and promotion of the island as a destination. The Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information partnered recently with the Embassy of Taiwan to host a robot festival which introduced St. Lucia's tourism offerings virtually. Details in this report. We're at the Pigeon Island National Landmark where prospective visitors and investors are being treated to an authentic St. Lucian experience. Through the use of technology, a robot named Davo, this initiative seeks to entice them to make St. Lucia their choice for business or leisure. The robot festival was an interactive, instantaneous exchange between Taiwan and St. Lucia that began with welcome remarks from St. Lucia's Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Honorable Dr. Ernest Hilaire. Viewers in Taiwan then journeyed virtually through Pigeon Island with stops at the soldiers' barracks, where they were furnished with facts about the site's rich history. This place is a very special place in the history of St. Lucia. At one time, we were one of the most treasured colonies during the colonial wars. And this place was a lookout spot to see all the warships that move up and down and for the various naval battles to take place. At one time, it was an island. And in the 1970s, it was connected to our mainland. It is now a place where St. Lucians go for recreation and for special activities. So in welcoming you to join us, we are welcoming you from a place which is very special in our hearts. Ambassador of Taiwan to St. Lucia, His Excellency Peter Chen was present at the event and explained that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Taiwan conceptualized the event to display the tourism offerings of Taiwan's diplomatic allies. I think Taiwan is a very important uh, partner of uh, St. Lucia's economic development and this time the focus is on tourism industry. Last year we uh, through uh, Caribbean and uh, Pacific region uh, agricultural products and tourism uh, campaign. Uh, we showcased uh, uh, St. Lucia's products and also uh, tourism but this time we use high-tech to approach to uh, showcase uh, the real uh, scenery uh, in St. Lucia and let Taiwanese to feel, to have a, a, a little sense of the, the real uh, scenery and the beautiful uh, uh, landscape of uh, St. Lucia. The tour proceeded to a rich showcase of St. Lucia's culture. The Taiwanese contingent enjoyed the sounds of steel pan, performed by jazzy music, and a vibrant carnival display by high-impact promotions featuring Island Tribe Carnival costumes. The Helen folk dancers dressed in warped duet performed the quadrille expertly with musical accompaniment by Mamai Lakai. The cultural showcase culminated with a grand masquerade portrayal by Silver Shadow dancers assisted by the Lapo Cabrit drummers. St. Lucia's Minister for Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Honorable Dr. Ernest Hiller stated that the technology used by the Taiwanese Embassy actually displays future possibilities. It tells us that now through technology you can have live presentations of sites and attraction and to actually um, project it around the world. Uh, and I think it's an exciting technology. I mean, you would have seen today <clears throat> some of the little challenges in using it, but I think it's still early stages of using such technology and such a medium for the promotion and marketing of St. Lucia. So for sure it is something that we will need to look into. I think it will be very exciting to be able to use this technology and this um, mode of, you know, of promotion and it really tells us just how much we can expand the, the, the promotion of St. Lucia. The robot festival tour moved to Fort Rodney where the Taiwanese audience enjoyed breathtaking panoramic views of the north of the island. St. Lucia's ambassador to Taiwan, His Excellency Edwin Laurent, while addressing the audience in Taipei, Taiwan, encouraged participants to place St. Lucia on their list of places to visit. The session that has been organized by MOFA and Taitra is so very timely. You know what we are seeing today and we're beginning to see is something that is really spectacular. We think, I mean, not just saying this because that's where we're from, but St. Lucia is really the pearl, the prize 
of the, of the Caribbean. The minister said it, the British and the French were fighting over it. It was a special colony. But now it is available to all of you to visit, and I can assure you that if you can come see us in St. Lucia, you will not regret it. We end this exciting showcase in hopes that our friends in Taiwan make St. Lucia their destination of choice. This was a joint initiative between the government of Taiwan and the government of St. Lucia. The Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives and the Consumer Affairs recently indicated that due to global shipping delays brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic, supplies of brown and refined sugar into St. Lucia have been adversely affected. Consequently, the current supplies are being managed to allow for even distribution to all consumers. The ministry has been receiving reports of businesses selling sugar above the legislative price. Deputy Director of the Consumer Affairs Department, Benedict Joseph, reminds businesses that this is an offense. The ministry takes this opportunity to remind businesses that the retail price of one pound of brown sugar is one dollar and the retail price of one pound of refined sugar is one dollar and ten cents. The ministry wishes to inform the general public that sugar is a price control item and should never be sold above the legislated price. In fact, Section 37, Subsection 1 of the Distribution and Price of Goods Act, Cap 1309, clearly states that anyone who sells above the legislated price commits an offence and is liable on summary conviction to a fine not exceeding $5,000 or to imprisonment for a term not exceeding one year or both. The Ministry of Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs urges consumers to be on the lookout for above legislated prices and report any instances to the Consumer Affairs Department. Consumers are encouraged to be extremely vigilant and report to the Consumer Affairs Department any business which is engaged in selling above the legislated price. The Consumer Affairs Department can be contacted at telephone numbers 468-4224 or 468-4231. Our operating hours are between 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The email address is consumeraffairs.commerce at govt.lc. The ministry is appealing to retailers to continue to manage the sale of sugar to discourage panic buying. Deputy Director of the Consumer Affairs Department, Benedict Joseph. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. Breast milk is the gold standard that cannot be emulated. It is the perfect food for your baby. Breast milk provides antibodies and protective factors which may fight against COVID-19 should your baby be exposed. Breastfeeding reduces the risk for premenopausal, breast and ovarian cancers. Breastfeeding is the most natural way to feed your baby. Breast milk provides all the nutrients your baby needs for the first six months of life. It requires patience. However, your baby deserves the best and it's worth the effort. Breastfeeding a baby up to 12 months improves jawbone development, thereby reducing misalignment of the teeth. Breast milk is baby's first immunization. It protects against viruses, bacteria, and also prevents some chronic diseases. If your child becomes sick with any illness, including COVID-19, it is very important that you continue breastfeeding. A woman with COVID-19 should be supported to breastfeed her baby safely. Hold her newborn skin to skin and share a room with her baby. After giving your baby only breast milk for the first six months of life, you can now slowly start introducing solid foods at the right textures. These include pureed vegetables, fruits, peas and healthy cereals. For more information, Call the Nutrition Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness at 
5359. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Wayol. Monsieur Tan Janel, Monsieur Madame Department qui n'est responsabilité pour information à gouvernement à cette ci ça c'est GIS, à CBP, Télévision Nationale, pays à NTN, à Poseto Nouvelle à Creol. Poseto Primus Hutchinson. Bagwe, la tenue, grand plan pour l'école vieux ouvert pour saison 9 là mais malgré ça maladie corona décidé jamais ça va pour faire alors gouvernement en consultation et puis diverses agences qui engagé dans le système éducation PA j'ai d'accord pour prendre l'autre route pour faciliter continuation de l'école pour saison 2021 ou 2022 ministre éducation a annoncé que toutes les sont l'école qui prend coup par service technologie internet Côté les étudiants qui servent laptop et bien tablette à qui par eux même et pas en chambre l'école comme qui est fait normalement. Ministre de responsabilité pour l'éducation, on est Sean Edward, et adressé nation dimanche au soir concernant le plan qui est en place pour l'école vieux ouvert lundi, le 13e jour en mois de septembre 2021. Ministre de l'éducation a déclaré que, en parmi les agences qui collaborent et puis le gouvernement avec le ministre de l'éducation, c'était le ministère de la Santé, le syndicat de l'école, ça veut dire l'institut de l'école, qui primaire connaît la saint louis Teachers Union et l'Association nationale pour les maîtres et maîtresses de l'école à cette ci Mais malheureusement, le ministre Sean Edward a annoncé que l'année a à peu près 4000 étudiants qui parlent de nécessité de technologie qui ont assisté pour suivre ces leçons de l'école. Ça, là. On est web, Sean Edward fait comprendre qu'il n'y a pas de point de démarche. Et j'ai appris des marches qui sont nécessaires pour que tous ces étudiants là trouvent des services morceaux de Massala pour faciliter ce sont l'école. Moi, j'ai appris l'occasion pour informer le Premier ministre et le cabinet de la situation. Et puis, le Premier ministre, là, j'ai dit que le ministre de l'Éducation ne peut faire tout ce qui est possible pour que nous jouions à peu près 4000 tablettes et puis laptops pour faire available by mamai en pays cette ici. On est pour l'occasion pour demander tout le monde pour nous coopérer et puis nous travailler ensemble. Nous nous pour travailler ensemble comme ministre éducation et puis union teacher organisation mettre l'école et puis tout le monde qui n'est l'entier en système éducation pays nous. Covid jamais été nous dans situation d'être nous pas tellement plein et puis mais nous jamais touché en tant qui passé d'être comme cette ici. Nous avons fait n'importe ça, nous mettons l'idée de nous pour faire. Et même si le Covid a affecté, nous avons une confiance. Ça n'a pas affecté le système d'éducation et puis l'année l'école, ça là, à la pièce manière qui a affecté le pays nous, à la manière qui est grave. Nous avons pris l'occasion pour dire tout mettre l'école, Ticha, Mamaï, Péouan. En nous, en nous, en nous, ensemble, en bonne année, en système d'éducation, pays nous. Ça, c'était la voie avec. Ça, c'était. Ministre la Kenny responsabilité pour l'éducation, c'est si, c'est honorable. Edward. Les spécialistes éducation, qui ont travaillé à ce yon set weg de langage pour esprit créole à l'école, c'est ici. Argement, j'ai en place pour présenter le gouvernement. Plan ça là, bon janvier l'année prochaine 2022. Plan de langage, na, langage national, ça là, a examiné le langage créole éducation. Principalement, à l'école première et secondaire, pour faire assurer que les étudiants savent parler, lire et écrire créole à même degré qu'ils langage anglais. C'est pour raison ça là qui fait le ministère de l'Éducation, en bas de la direction Kamdou, de tenir une conférence récemment pour se dire pour implémenter le langage national pour faire assurer que les créoles recevraient des degrés de connaissances qui méritent. Officier Kamdou, qui est responsable pour le langage anglais, Madame Angel, Haglin déclare que la conférence a adressé plusieurs façons pour implémenter le programme ça là en ni l'école première et secondaire. Il y en a si ça qui était plus important, c'est côté ministère de l'Éducation qui a appointé les officiers spéciaux qui a supporté les titres et les instituteurs pour faire assurer que ces instituteurs conduisent ces leçons en façon qui s'y posait faite 
pour bail tout ce qui pour qui si 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 à l'école ça là et ben si si ça mérite à l'école à ce bail au qualité si pour il mérite si l'on se spécialise là plan c'est pour ouais qui tout travail fini bonne l'année prochaine madame Kathleen dit aussi objectif là généralement c'est pour ouais que tous les étudiants bien éprouvés en habilité pour développer capacité yo en langage créole même qu'en anglais tout ça c'est pour ouais qui c'est aussi embrasser plus fort et pour ta culture pour tout pays a pour ça préserver l'héritage culturel c'est aussi ces spécialistes là ni espoir qui initiative ça là qui éprouvé autant capacité pour les étudiants et les étudiants servir différents langages ces spécialistes là dit qui la caïne étonnement spécial pour ces instituteurs de l'école pour ça aussi trouver certifié qui a placé yo en position pour servir méthode qui doit être pour présenter ces leçons en façon pour les étudiants comprendre et apprendre gouvernement a annoncé que la jani un changement en prix pétrole en cylindre LPG 20 22 et on salive puis a détail pour gasoline diesel et kérosène pas changé et ce changement qui a fait là commencé le 13 en mois de septembre ça c'est lundi 2021 puis gasoline ou resté en même prix ça c'est 3 dollars et 3 go dessous par litre puis 13 dollars pour 11 go dessous par gasoline par gallon gasoline euh, pas changé aussi et puis a c'est 2 dollars et 10 go dessous par litre et ben 10 dollars par go par gallon diesel resté en même prix ça c'est 3 dollars 3 go dessous par litre Et 13 dollars 11 go dessous à galon puis cylinder 20 livres là baissé sorti 31 dollars et déchlin 5 go dessous pour 30 dollars et quoi les 4 go dessous par cylinder puis pour cylinder 22 livres baissé sorti 34 dollars et quoi les 6 sous pour 30 dollars et quoi les 8 go par cylinder puis pour cylinder 100 livres là il a baissé sorti 219 dollars et puis on fait 4 sous pour 211 dollars yon chita go desu pa selen l'autre prix pour pétrole tay ka fait lady le 4e jour en mois d'octobre 2000 et monsieur madame écoutez moi ma bout nouvelle là mon ka monsieur autant pour ka garder mon ka voyon invitation pour je ne puis moi encore c'est dire pour sauver la vie ngay pour cette autre nouvelle et à la présent mon ka vie pour cette autre channel merci à pil primus we now take a look at the weather Sunrise Tuesday 5:52 a.m. Winds will be blowing between the east and the southeast near 12 miles per hour or 19 kilometers per hour. Partly cloudy skies becoming cloudy at times with a few scattered showers and a chance of isolated thunderstorms. Seas are slight with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0.6 to 1.2 meters. Moisture and instability associated with the surface trough will continue to cause cloudiness, scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms over our region during the forecast period. A weak tropical wave located a few hundred miles over the east of the Lesser Antilles is expected to cause some cloudy periods with showers over the region from late Tuesday into Wednesday. Another tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 20 miles per hour. Of 31 kilometers per hour. A third tropical wave, located just off the West African coast, has a high chance of cyclone development during the next five days as it moves westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. That brings us to the end of NPN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Novel.